Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories. Creepy file number 14, written by Zazie Goose, my mother-in-law from hell. I used to be a very naive, innocent kind of person. I was a type of optimist who believed there was a touch of goodness in every heart, a dangerous mindset to be in. I realize now that seeing the world through my rose-colored glasses put a big, flashing, red target on my back. Often, when you think of scary stories involving creepy behavior and psychological abuse, you think of an occurrence from a stranger. In my case, it came from my mother-in-law. My husband's mother initially adored me, not for any reason other than thinking I could be easily controlled. I was meek, with a passive personality so it made sense that I would come across like someone who could be easily influenced. Looking back on it, I cringe at how creepy the situation really was. For the sake of this story, I'll call my mother-in-law by the name of Mrs. Psycho. At the beginning of my relationship with my husband, Mrs. Psycho and I were getting along great, or so I thought. She'd take me shopping, give compliments about my hair and girly stuff like that. As the relationship with my partner grew more serious, she'd rant and rave to everyone in our neighborhood about how much she adored me and how I was like the daughter she never had, so naturally, I thought things were progressing positively. But certain things were just really off about Mrs. Psycho. I noticed little tidbits of her behavior at parties and neighborhood social gatherings. She'd sulk in a corner and I'd chuck it up to her being socially awkward or anxious, but looking back at it now, I noticed she was always whimpering about something negative going on in her life. How she fell off her bike and hurt her elbow while riding through a construction zone. How one neighbor complained about her parking in front of his house. Losing her job because she didn't get along with a coworker. The list went on and on. In every story, she portrayed herself as a victim of some unusual circumstances. One huge red flag that my mind didn't understand at the time was a story she was always telling about her other son, my partner's brother. She'd say some really disturbing things about how he'd held her, my partner and his dad, hostage in their own home, and how he'd physically punched their father in the face. The way she described the story made it sound like my partner's brother was a bully to the whole family, and my partner didn't seem to think it was quite as severe as she made it sound. Regardless, in all her wild stories and accusations about him, she always scolded her son in ways that I just can't imagine ever scolding my own child. What my husband and I didn't fully understand at the time was the underlying problem, which wasn't necessarily his brother, but the woman who had been a driving force for the insanity behind the behavior. Psychological abuse can trigger emotional responses in very unpredictable and disturbing ways. Mrs. Psycho's behavior becomes evidently creepy after our engagement, she showed signs of unhealthy enmeshment. First, she was angry we didn't tell her immediately when we'd gotten engaged. Then she was angry we changed the wedding date without first asking her for permission. She expressed a desire for my future husband and I to live in the upstairs of her house and pay her rent. We told her that we can afford our own home and we want to start a family, so that wouldn't work out. The infatuation in her eyes was frightening. She would look normal one moment, then if you told her something she didn't want to hear, her eyes would turn black. The memory of her eyes still sends me with a frightened chill down my spine. From there, she became increasingly controlling. Mrs. Psycho and her husband, Mr. Psycho, would start showing up to our house every other day or so. I started counting how long they could go without having to see us, and that number came to a mere three days. There was no privacy and I felt that I had to close the curtains over our windows every night. I just had that uneasy feeling, you know? I locked the bedroom door as routine before bed, just to be on the extra safe side. Despite our relationship being pleasant in the beginning, I noticed that I was now feeling like I was treading on eggshells around Mrs. Psycho, or rather landmines. It seemed like anything I said was offensive to her, no matter how innocent. I realized I couldn't talk to her like I used to be able to when me and her son were just dating. I remembered when we'd be able to have nice, in-depth conversations and I had allowed myself to be vulnerable with her. I confided in her about how I had a lot of social anxiety and that her son came into my life during a time when I was suffering from crippling depression. 
I talked about how he'd brought a ray of sunshine into my life, thinking that speaking kindly about her son would please her, but she just had this unfeeling, glazed over look across her face. Hoping to amend my relationship with her, I decided to help her out one day with organizing her antiques. She had this hobby of going to auctions and buying and selling knickknacks, buttons and stuff like that. She would get very proud of her collections of things that I sort of thought were junk, but to be polite I told her that I saw beauty in these things, hoping to get back on her good side. There were some creepy dolls in the mix, including this horrifying looking vampire doll with piercing red eyes. She said she'd had that doll for years and used to scare her sons with it when they were little kids. She laughed at the memory and the sound had an eerie, satanic vibe to it. As if this wasn't enough to freak me out, she then told me this story about how a female coworker complained about her to the HR department at her company. To seek revenge on this woman, Mrs. Psycho wrote a letter that was meant for the coworker's husband, telling him that she was cheating on him. To remain as anonymous as possible, she told me how she slipped on a pair of black gloves and drove the letter to a faraway location so that her address couldn't be traced. I remember feeling very uneasy about her story, wondering how she could get angry enough to drive hours away just to cause emotional harm to another human being. There came a point after hearing the story when I didn't want to be left alone with my partner's mom anymore. My partner tried to talk to his parents about how I was feeling like I was on eggshells around them, but they flipped the narrative to say that they were the ones feeling on eggshells around me. During this time, I painstakingly realized that psychological torture exists in the form of extreme invalidation. Not having your feelings acknowledged can really drive a person crazy. It was then when I felt a little more clued into what may have happened to Mrs. Psycho's other son. I can't be sure because I never met the guy, but I think he was driven mad by his mother's severe emotional neglect and manipulation. Now she was pulling the same tricks on me and my partner gaslighting us into believing that we were just too sensitive. When my husband and I started figuring out that something was off, things got even creepier. His parents started showing up to our house to corner us into submission. What I mean is, they'd tell us stories to make them seem like the victims so that we would give in to demands of what they wanted at the time. If we denied their requests, they'd use psychological manipulation by telling us that we were uncaring or ungrateful. One demonstration of this manipulation was when I became pregnant. I explained that the smell of pizza made me extremely sick, but this was ignored. When Mrs. Psycho insisted that we go to a pizza restaurant for her birthday, I was confused as to why I felt like I couldn't say no. My husband was in the same predicament. Somehow, I think we sensed that something bad would happen to us if we declined. This is also because Mrs. Psycho's husband and her sister had contacted us, telling us explicitly that we weren't allowed to say no to her dinner invitations anymore. They explained it like, saying no hurts her feelings, but there was something else that I can't quite explain, something hidden beneath the surface that sounded really threatening. I had no idea why, but I just did not feel safe. Then, only two weeks after giving birth to our daughter, I had the creepiest interaction of my life. Mrs. Psycho caught me alone while I was on my front porch. The weather was really nice, so I was rocking with my baby in one of our outdoor chairs. She came up to the doorstep and assumed a seat in a chair next to me. Then in a quiet, ominous voice, she said to me, You have to share her, you know? Her black eyes flicked to the infant in my arms. I know what you might be thinking but this wasn't said in a cute, excited new grandma kind of way. Her voice sounded cold and possessive, with certain passive-aggressive intent behind the statement. I naturally clutched my arms around my daughter tighter, feeling a protective instinct take over me. Mrs. Psycho had expressed to me before that she'd always wanted to have a daughter, but was only ever able to have sons. Maybe it was being influenced by the postpartum hormones or just overall feeling paranoid, but a disturbing thought occurred to me that she might want to get rid of me somehow, to have my daughter for herself. I later told my husband about the bizarre interaction with his mom and how I couldn't keep up with the heavy psychological demands of his parents anymore. It was all taking a strange, emotional toll on me, as well as a strain on our marriage. I still couldn't pinpoint exactly why, 
Nevertheless, they were causing us a lot of stress, which was impacted on me all the more while I was trying to adapt to my new role as a new mother. They even restricted me in bizarre ways, telling me I was not allowed to refer to our daughter as my baby. I had previously posted on Facebook about how excited and happy I was to be a new mom. I posted a side-by-side -side picture of me with my daughter with the caption, She has my eyes, which was meant to be light-hearted and innocent. My mother-in-law commented on the post with, My son had something to do with it too, which not only put a damper on the mood but also felt creepy. Like, why did she have to mention something we already know? It was almost as if my happiness made her more enraged. I really felt like I was starting to go crazy. The stress was enough to make me physically sick. At first, my husband hesitated when I told him about my concerns, stating the usual spiel that was natural for him to say, that they were his parents, that he couldn't just drop contact with them. But something in his voice contained fear and it wouldn't take long before he would realize how messed up the situation actually was. The incident that drove him to the point of cutting off his parents happened when they cornered us in our own living room, demanding that we watch their unruly dog while they went on vacation for five days. My husband almost caved, but stayed firm when he told them, No, we can't. We have a two-month-old baby to look after. The murderous glare his mom then flashed at me was intense and enough to make me crawl out of my own skin. You know that look someone gives right before they are about to attack? It looked like something like that from the movies, very primal and hateful. I thought for sure that she was about to lunge at me and wring her hands around my neck, causing me death by strangulation. I was terrified. Mr. and Mrs. Psycho eventually left our house, but they were clearly angry that they weren't able to convince us to conform to their will. My husband and I had a dark, suspicious feeling that something bad was about to happen. First, we received lengthy emails from Mrs. Psycho, mostly insulting me. She said she thought that I was brainwashing her son and she went on to portray herself as a victim. She used the knowledge of my anxiety disorder to make an argument that I was mentally unstable and dangerous. She threatened to post about me on Facebook and make our life a living hell if we didn't apologize for deviating from what she wanted. At the same time, she told me that I was dead to her and listed all the mistakes I've ever made in the past as well as criticizing my faults. I'd be lying if I said this didn't sting. My husband and I needed space to recover from the emotional wounds that she had inflicted on us. We remained silent, not wanting to engage with her any further. My husband and I were pretty scared as well as being hurt, spending most of our days cooped up in our bedroom, not knowing what to expect, but we stayed strong through the process of separating from the toxic relationship. Mrs. Psycho proceeded to make good on her threat, posting about me publicly on Facebook. She said I was batshine crazy. She even went a step further, saying that I had borderline personality disorder in all capital letters. This came out of complete nowhere. She knew I had anxiety, but I'd never mentioned anything to her about being borderline because I wasn't diagnosed with that at all. It didn't end there though. She also posted a dramatic story of how we had banned her from seeing her grandchild. An active smear campaign against me ensued as Mr. and Mrs. Psycho actually went door to door to everyone's house in my community, posing as good citizens to warn everyone about their extremely dangerous, manipulative, five foot tall daughter-in-law. My neighbors didn't react the way that was expected though. They were more wary of her than of me. Instead of ruining my reputation, which was the desired effect, most people in my neighborhood were majorly creeped out by Mrs. Psycho's efforts. They were equally creeped out by Mr. Psycho's willingness to go along with the whole thing. I guess after years of being beaten down with his wife's abuse, he was just an empty shell of a man, a flying monkey to the proverbial wicked witch. There are a few doctors and therapists in my neighborhood who couldn't officially diagnose her since she wasn't their patient, but they said off the record that they believe Mrs. Psycho may have been projecting meaning that she was, in essence, confessing that she is potentially dangerous and volatile while pinning it on me. This, along with some stories of Mrs. Psycho's interactions with other people in our neighborhood, confirmed that something was disturbingly off with this lady. This information made the situation all the more unsettling when Mr. and Mrs. Psycho showed up to our house for what we suspected would be a confrontation. My husband and I were watching Survivor in the living room with our baby when the doorbell rang. 
He crept to the front door to peer behind the curtain to see who it was. I could see the fear on his face. It's my parents, he said and my blood ran cold. I immediately ran with my baby upstairs, pausing only to tell him that it was his choice whether to answer the door or not, since they're his parents, but that me and the baby would be hidden away. As I made my way up the stairs, my husband hovered over the front door, conflicted. He didn't know what to do. Meanwhile, I could hear jostling at the front door like his parents were trying to force their way inside our house with a spare key. I thank God to this day that we had just changed the locks a few days before so they couldn't get in. I proceeded to run upstairs and close the bedroom door behind me, locking me and the baby inside. I held my daughter close, my heart thudding wildly against my chest. When there was a knock on the bedroom door, I reacted with a jolt. It scared me crapless. My husband's voice on the other side calmed me down though. He told me he didn't answer the door. He was trembling when I unlocked the door to let him in. His face was pale. He showed me a text message from his dad saying, Anyone home? Followed by another text from his mother later saying, You're a coward hiding behind your keyboard. I don't know what would have happened if my husband had chosen to answer the door, but I shudder to think about it. My husband and I both blocked them after that. Phone numbers, social media accounts, everything. They moved away to another state, thank God. We have since had no contact with his parents for almost two years now and our daughter is growing in a loving environment, completely free of any toxicity. Sadly, we have had to block some of my husband's other family because they kept telling us we should talk to my in-laws, which by the way, feels a lot like being told, please contact your abuser. For this reason, I sometimes feel like it would have been almost better to be physically abused than mentally abused because then there would be some form of visible evidence of the harm that they had inflicted. In the meantime, they have so far made no attempts to contact us with an apology or anything. Instead, they once reached out with a nasty, have a crappy anniversary, you two are a match made in hell, which only further secured our decision to cut contact with them entirely. I have since armed myself with knowledge so that I will be less naive about creepy behavior in the future. I have studied up on narcissism and the negative psychological impact that some people can have on others through gaslighting and invalidation. I hope everyone listening out there may be aware that not all abuse is physical.